everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to be talking all about my January experience with the No Buy, it's my January check-in and I'm going to be talking all about how I've been getting on this month. If you like getting the best out of your makeup and getting the most out of your makeup, please do subscribe to the channel because I am all about that life and not about buying all of the latest releases. So let's just get on with it. Basically today I'm going to be talking to you about my experience throughout January, how I've been finding it, any changes changes that I've been noticing and what if anything I have had to repurchase. So I'll get the repurchases out of the way first because I feel like that's quite important. <laughs> I am on a replacement only no buy which means I'm only allowed to replace things once I've used the last of that thing up. So if I have three blushes and I use one up I am not allowed to replace it. I'm only allowed to replace once I've used up the final one if you like. So the only thing I've had to replace this month and I think a replacement's going to be necessary again probably in February or March is my MAC Fix Plus. I ran out of any sort of facial spray whatsoever so I did repurchase this one and I repurchased it probably towards the very beginning of the month. You can see I've already used half of it up. I have dry skin so I like to put a liberal, a, liberal, a liberal spritz of this on my face after I've powdered just to meld everything together and just so that my face doesn't feel so constricted. Because I've got quite dry skin I do enjoy putting a lot of powder on which isn't obviously recommended for people with dry skin and this just helps it not feel so constricting and so claustrophobic on my skin if you like and it's also great for obviously foiling eyeshadows and it's great for a plethora of things to be honest with you. Do I need to spend the amount of money on this or could I get a drugstore one? I could get a drugstore one but this is one of those products that I always seem to go back to the MAC one and obviously there's the perk of back to MAC with it as well. One of the things I've noticed with this one this time round is they seem to have improved the spritzer. That's one bugbear that I always had with this product, that the spritzer was too violent. It wasn't very very much of a fine mist, it just was like Psh! in your face and you always ended up with little dots around your face. I feel like this is much more of a fine spritz now. If I just kind of show you, I'm going to be wasting product here but I'll just show you. It's just kind of a bit more of a fine mist now. You can kind of hear it in it. It's not so like it used to be. I'm not good at sound effects, but there we go. So basically this cost me £18 and it's gone up, I know, in price again. And £3.99 shipping. Now the shipping was a necessary evil because I don't have any Mac stores nearby. So that was a total of, come on Rach, maths. $21.99 altogether for this and that's quite expensive for what it is it's just a facial spray but I am not buying anything else so I feel like I'm okay to do that will I buy that one every time probably not I'll probably mix it up with getting a drugstore one I do feel like this is something I'm going to go through quite a lot um, just because of my habits with using it but that's the only thing with regards to makeup or skincare that I've had to repurchase this month I have also repurchased three Listerines I know that sounds really really super super often to repurchase them but at the minute I'm going through Invisalign and I have to brush my teeth every time I've had a drink that isn't water or a meal so I like to have coffee I like to obviously eat I have to eat so I've been finding myself brushing and flossing and mouth washing up to five times a day just to because sometimes I just want to drink a coffee in between meals I'm trying not to do that but you know I am human and I do like a cup of coffee every now and again so it means that every time I have had something to eat or drink that isn't water I do have to brush and floss and mouthwash and that means going through mouthwash like there's no tomorrow so I've been getting the 500 milliliter bottles of Listerine and I have bought three this month. I buy them as soon as I am running low because I don't want to run out obviously and I've got one at work, a 500 milliliter bottle at work that I did replace and I had a 500 milliliter bottle at home that I did replace as well so it was 250 for the one at work and for the one at home I got it on offer at two for four pounds. Is that breaking my no buy? Technically not because I didn't include dental care in it 
but I don't feel bad about bulk buying two for at home because they were on offer at two for four pound rather than 250 each and it will be used. They will be used before February is out. They will be used probably within about two weeks. So that's the repurchases out the way. I feel like I rambled on forever then and forever in a day. But what have I noticed changing in the month of January? I have noticed a few subtle changes already and changes in focus for me so if I go through the subtle changes that I've noticed I've noticed that I am avoiding looking at makeup as much as I used to if I go into a shop that I know sells makeup I will tend to walk straight past I maybe will give a little glance and just see if there's any of the end caps with new products on but for the most part I've just been walking straight past and going towards making a beeline what for what I'm actually going into the shop for. I've not been looking at makeup with any sort of interest as such and I think it's just because I want to avoid any temptation. I don't feel like I need to buy makeup, I feel like I don't want to buy makeup, I want to make this a successful no buy and I want to have that year of breaking habits. At the minute I do have plans for what I want to do next year and next year I don't just want to go back to buying everything like I used to and just buying indiscriminately. I don't want to have all my hard work go to waste. I want to downsize my collection over the course of this year by using up everything that I've got and just repurchasing as and when I use the last of something. And then when the year is over, I want to be able to go forward with a more sensible buying habit. I'm not sure I'll govern myself in the respect that I have a budget for every month, but I will probably govern myself with the requirements for buying a new product rather if I have wanted it for a certain amount of time then allow myself to buy it because it's obviously not a passing fancy and something that I do actually want. So I'm not sure how that will work, it's ages away but it is something that's been occurring to me this month. I've also noticed that I am avoiding looking at new makeup on Instagram. I've not been as interested in watching reviews on new makeup on YouTube and I don't know if that's just because I'm not in the headspace of wanting to look at new makeup or if it's to avoid the temptation of buying new makeup. I feel like it's because I'm not as interested because I'm getting so much enjoyment out of what I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis within my collection and I'm enjoying using what I already have. I don't feel the need to be looking elsewhere. I feel quite content with what I have. I'm not looking for the new thrill or the new, the latest thing because I am feeling quite satisfied and quite happy with putting on my face everything that I already have. I found this new way of thinking spilling over into other areas of my life. Obviously I'm doing project pans and I'm trying to actively use up products and I'm getting a lot of joy from that and getting a lot of satisfaction from seeing things using up and seeing that I am getting active use and progressing with my products. Overall I'm feeling very zen about the process so far and I'm feeling a lot calmer and a lot less stressed now that I am actively not focusing on new makeup. It's got to that point for me whereby the consumerist aspect of makeup and the constant buy, 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 sell, sell, sell attitude that has been promoted over YouTube for the past, I would say, massively in the last three years. It was probably there before that, but it's gotten super huge in the last three years. I would say that that has, and as a subscriber mentioned in a previous um, video in a comment, that has led to us all having a bit of a problem in that we were watching these reviews and getting obsessed about the new makeup and feeling like we wanted it and all of the marketing techniques were paying off for companies, making us want the new products. We built up huge collections. And now we're at that point where we have too much and my focus has definitely shifted to wanting to use up what I have. But the point that I'm making is over that time, companies very quickly adjusted to this new way of thinking and adjusted their supply to meet our demand. And now I feel like the supply is much bigger than the demand for me especially because there's products coming out all the damn time. There's products coming out every single week. I remember a good few years back that collections were eagerly anticipated and you would be 
eagerly awaiting the next release you'd be excited for it you'd be looking forward to it because it didn't happen all the time Urban Decay would come out with maybe one palette a year and you really looked forward to it now the collections are dropping like there's no tomorrow they are dropping so fast and so often so frequently and it's very difficult for there to be enough variety because there is so much that nothing is innovative anymore, nothing is new and nothing is particularly exciting for me. So I was finding the complete bombardment of products constantly overwhelming and stressful and it's at that point that you start to think hang on there is something amiss here my hobby is stressing me out this is something that I do for fun it's something that I do for a creative outlet it's enjoyment it escapes everyday life and it's starting to stress me out that's not how it should be it should be something that you go to to chill out to try and enjoy life take a step back take time out from your everyday life and do something that is fun something that's creative something that is not serious can you imagine if your hobby was knitting knitting is a very very relaxing process you can sit and watch tv you can i've got friends who do it on the beach on holiday and it's such a relaxing hobby if something happened in order to make that not a relaxing hobby anymore then there's definitely definitely a problem and that's how it is for makeup it is super super stressful the amount of stuff that's dropping and I think that a lot of us have gotten to that point where we are just overwhelmed and it's too much and I don't know about you when I feel overwhelmed I shut down I just shut down it's too much block it out and I need to take a minute and I need to take a step back to regroup and I feel like that's what my no buy is it's my stepping back and regrouping channeling my efforts into things that are more wholesome I found my focus shifting into other things other things that just bring a simple pleasure in life and one of those is a plant that I was given when we moved in last year we got well we got a housewarming gift when we moved into our house in January of last year so we've lived here a year now if any of you have been subscribed since I moved house well done it's been a year and you've stuck with me through a whole year so thank you so much by the way and off topic right this orchid has been alive for a year now and so many of my friends were like how did you manage to keep an orchid alive for a year and I'm like hmm but basically what happened was I would put it in the living room the flowers dropped like last April or something and I thought oh no I've killed it everyone was right orchids are hard to look after so I, I put it in the kitchen basically mostly because I didn't want people to see these two ugly stalks with no flowers on them so I put it into the kitchen and I was like it's still drinking water I'm not convinced it's dead so I didn't throw it away and I did a little bit of looking online and a little bit of research and I thought I don't really know what I'm doing and I started trimming the um the stalks back the um <laughs> And I just left it on the side, watered it once a week every 10 days because I was told don't water it too much, you will kill it. So I was just giving it a little bit of water, it was on the window ledge in the kitchen and now just before Christmas it started growing new buds and I was like, oh, I was so excited. And <laughs> I am not green fingered, I am not a plant lover, I am not a gardener, I... I'm not a vegetable grower, I'm nothing like that, I am not green fingered in any way. But the actual sheer excitement when these buds came back, when everyone told me, you'll kill that orchid, it's going to die. And it's not died and I'm like, oh, I can't believe this. And it's it's grown new buds and I am so excited about that. And I it's bringing me so much joy to look at this orchid every day. One of the flowers has just opened, one of the new flowers. And... It just gives me so much joy and so much satisfaction knowing that I am nurturing something and it is growing and it is thriving and that sounds so silly but hey I'm a girl with no children so my orchid, my orchid I'm treating it like a child and that orchid is pampered I tell you and so that and my dog <laughs> and my dog but one of the other things that I've been concentrating on during the month of January like I said I've been focusing my efforts and my attention on things other than makeup to try and I mentioned I want to improve my mental health and another thing that I've also been doing is making sure I'm doing a lot of walking outside and that sounds really boring but I, I 
installed an app on my phone, Sweatcoin, I don't know if you've heard of it, and what it basically does is it gives you sort of money for walking outside, so it's a little bit of an incentive. This isn't sponsored, but I will leave my link down below if any of you guys want to start. You will, um, just as full disclosure, they give you sweat coins if you invite people, but you're under no obligation at all, and again, not sponsored. And it, what it does is it allocates you money every time you walk a certain amount of steps, so I've been walking a lot more, I'm feeling a lot healthier, and I'm feeling a lot better, and you can use your sweat coins as you accrue them, you can buy things with it, and, and stuff like that. So. Mostly, do I think I'm ever going to be able to buy something with the sweat coins I've got? Probably not, but it's just a bit of an incentive and it gives you a little bit of a thrill watching the numbers go up and seeing how far you're walking and my dog is really loving the extra walks, so I'm not going to lie. And I've been feeling so much more fulfilled and so much more balanced and centred. Do I think that my problem is solved completely? Absolutely not, um, but I'm finding other and more healthy outlets. I feel like I am starting to notice changes in my life and changes in my psyche and my approach and the habits are definitely starting to break and I'm finding myself thinking about makeup less. Um, well, new makeup at least. I am really, really getting a thrill as of using up what I already have though. But be sure and let me know how your no buys are going down in the comment section below. I would love to know how you guys are all doing. If you have broken your no buy at all, and what I would say is if anyone has broken their no buy, they have relapsed and bought something, move past it forgive yourself, move on, learn from it, and hopefully don't do it again. But what I would say is don't beat yourself up if you've broken your rules, because the year is still young, and if you carry it on, there's no telling how much money you're gonna save, versus if you stop and go back to your old ways completely. If you have a blip in the road, that's fine, but you've just got to get past it. And the most important thing is to forgive yourself and just allow yourself to carry it on. If you do relapse and you buy something, it's not the end of the world, you know, it, it's, you've just got to learn from it and don't let that undo what could be done if you carry on through the year. So. That's basically my little bit of a motivational speech. So let me know how you're getting on in the comment section down below. That's it for my update this month. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.